So you should be able to see my screen now, and then um, I have the Zoom chat up too, so that if you send any chats, hopefully I'll be able to see them. Um, but I'm very excited that everybody's here. So um, this is our first meeting for cohort four of the Advanced Art Book Club. I'm gonna be the facilitator and um, we'll talk about sort of what our expectations are and what we wanna do with this book club. So our objective for today is really just to set the timeline, expectations, and goals that we all have. Um, hopefully we can get to know each other a little bit since we are going to spend many, many weeks together um, just talking about things with an R. And then we're going to review the intro to the book. So no coding today, but we'll definitely get into that in all of the weeks that follow. So first, just some logistics for this book club. Let's plan to meet every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern time for about 50 minutes. I mean, if it's shorter, that's great, but we definitely don't wanna approach or go over an hour, especially since it's later in the day or maybe in the middle of someone's work day, depending on where you are. Um, and some logistics about the actual book, we will go through the book sequentially based on feedback from the prior cohorts. This is what made the most sense. Some um, of the prior cohorts even said that the later chapters were pretty dense. So if we read something and decide that we want to take two weeks to go through a chapter, or maybe um, there are sections of the book and we can go have a week for each of the chapter within that section, and then have a, another week that's just the overview of what we learned in that section, we can figure it out as we go, but it's something that we should anticipate. We're also going to take turns presenting. No one is forced to present. You are welcome to participate without ever presenting, um, but you're gonna get really tired of my voice if it's just me, I promise. So there's this sign-up sheet that I will send in our um, Slack channel, and it just looks like this. So there's the chapter, um, who's presenting, and then there are these check boxes that will X out the weeks that we've done just so that we don't forget what chapters we've read. Um, and so for instance, if you see that you're really excited about chapter 11 within functional programming, you can go ahead and sign yourself up for that. Um, I've also tried to put some useful links in, and um, once I post this link, everybody should be able to edit it. And so there's a link to the actual book that we're reading, just in case we forget. Um, there's this um, R for Data Science online help guide. So the previous cohorts that have gone through the book actually have created this document for us. And so, for instance, in chapter two, there were some common questions that popped up as people were reading through this book. So they put these questions together and a response to those questions. And some of them are really short, some of them have code, um, but as we're reading all of these chapters on our own and then when we come together as a book club, this might be really useful just um, for answering questions before book club or framing even our book club discussion. There's also a template for presenting um, on the GitHub if that is something that you're interested in. I did not make this presentation with an R markdown because I'm having some computer issues and if I open R my computer crashes right now. Um, but that is something we can do in the future. And then there's also um, this GitHub page that has all of the information from all of the cohorts. So we're cohort four, which is kind of nice because we know what the other cohorts liked and didn't like and we can see even um, what they've presented so we could go and look at the slides for next week for whoever's presenting chapter two you have a couple of examples that you have to pick from and in um, some of the weeks where we might have um, interactive activities or live coding you could go in and see well wh what did this look like for um, cohort two when they presented on control flow and you could see what worked and what didn't work um, if you want to get that involved with it you definitely don't have to this is the template that um, is the R Markdown template for presenting. So just something to keep in mind, this is what that will look like. All right. Um, and so yeah, so if no one signs up, it'll default to me. But again, we're gonna get pretty tired of that pretty quickly. And sorry about that, let me share my screen again. I'd like for us to take just a second now to um, introduce ourselves. You're welcome to use the chat panel. I have the chat right here. Um, but we can also just speak up. And if anyone has stage fright, there's just a little prompt here on things you could say, but um, I'll go first. My name is Emily Whistle, and my pronouns are she, hers. I'm a graduate student at Emory University. And all of the R that I have learned has almost entirely been 
stack overflow. So I'm very excited to hopefully develop a more nuanced understanding of R here today and um, hopefully be with a community that's also excited about R. Uh, and then anybody else, just feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat. Well, I have a question. What are you studying? Um, so I study the human microbiome. Um, I have a background in psychology and genomics and sort of the bioinformatics side of things. And I'm in a school of nursing now, so I'm trying to apply uh, my data science skills to improving patient outcomes. Okay, I can go next. Um, my name is Torin Schaefer pronouns she, her. I'm a postdoc at Cornell University, um, currently living in Illinois, though, doing data science. And my just finished my PhD in statistics at University of Missouri, and I've been using R for about seven years now. So, but I've never read this book, so I'm pretty excited. I can go next. Hi, I'm Ran, uh, Ran Mukherjee. I'm a postdoc at NASA JPL. Um, I have been using R for the last six years doing bioinformatics. I work also in the microbiome field right now doing spacecraft microbiome, and hopefully Mars microbiome. But uh, so I've been doing a lot of R programming for many years, but I'm getting more into actually writing um, sort of procedures and, and doing things like writing a code for other people, which is uh, something that you start doing once you uh, run out of things to do for yourself, I think. So, and then when I saw Emily's post about this on Twitter, I thought it would be fun to be in our community because right now we've been working from home and I'm kind of uh, isolated and it would be fun to kind of see what's going on, what everyone's thinking and going over a book that I've gone in parts over, but not totally. Uh, it would be fun. So that's why I'm here. Nice to be with all of you guys. And thanks, Emily, for doing this. Okay, I'll go now. My name is Camilo Strange, pronouns he, him. I have background economics, working in IT now, and have been doing data, data analysis with R for a number of years, um, going from the very autodidactic base R doing packages and now I want to just get my work easier. Also I want to practice and practice with a community with like minded community that wants to get better at this. It's easier to fall into traps when it's just very few people. So I, I can go next. Uh, hi everyone my name is Stefan Vilela uh, pronounce he, him. I'm speaking here from Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit about me. I have a background in public policy and I've been working in government for three years and uh, in uh, the state secretary of education. And in 2018, I've been, I've been doing another undergrad in computational mathematics. I'm willing to get some foundations in mathematics and computer science. And in 2018, I started my journey in with R that helped me a lot in my work, especially the tight verse environment. It's just fantastic for this data analyst work, data science work. And now um, I've been postponing this activity to learn about more R for some while. And I, when I saw your post and then I thank you for the initiative in Twitter, I, I but that was a good idea to start in, in the advanced R book to get some foundation on R programming language. I've been uh, coding with C, C++ and Python, but I think that R uh, would, would be a great advance to learn more about R. And the, and the foundation is not just the, the, the data science environment. And I'm very excited to with the book club and hope that we can learn a lot. Thank you, everyone. I can go next. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto. Uh, my background, oh, pronounced he, him. 
Um, my background is in computer science, but I also did some physics and then I did some computational biology and now I'm doing atmospheric science. So I've been all, all, all over the place and uh, I've been working with R for maybe five years, but I think I don't have like a strong um, foundation with it, like in advanced topics. And I've been working packages, but I guess I don't, I don't follow the best practices. So I guess this is part of my motivation to learn more and uh, do things the right way and how other people are saying them. Uh, but yeah, uh, glad to join you and looking forward to learn from everyone. Yeah, I can do uh, next. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I don't no. know. You go After ahead. You. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Namita, and uh, my background is in uh, applied mathematics. So I completed my PhD in applied mathematics and postdoc in uh, mechanical engineering. So I started my uh, data science career with R like uh, maybe five or six years ago. And I started with R, then I switched to Python, but I still like R. And um, I used to go to different meetups at my place, but now with uh, COVID and this situation, it's not possible. So it's a great learning opportunity for me. And uh, I wanted to review those topics, the R topics and uh, discuss with you all. So looking forward to working with you all. Thank you. And uh, hi, hello everyone from Oxford, United Kingdom. Uh, my name is Alex. I think I'm the newbie of the group. I've only recently completed an undergrad in information science. I've recently started studying for a master of science in data analytics here in Oxford. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to learning from everyone and all your great experiences and uh, do some programming. Yeah, um, I guess I'm lost. I all, uh, I'm actually also probably a newbie. I just graduated from undergrad. Um, I'm now doing my PhD in linguistics at uh, the University of Pennsylvania. Um, he, him, uh, and I started using R about one or two years ago for experimental stuff. Um, but I also like R as a language and I like functional programming. So I would like to get better at that. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Uh, one of the things I've heard a lot of people say, just a theme, was that um, we're excited about having a community of people to go through this book with, especially given that our normal community um, access, I guess, has been impacted by COVID. So uh, I'm really excited that we're all, that we all introduced ourselves, and hopefully that does lay the foundations for us to continue to um, develop our um, community. Sorry, Camilla, did you, did I talk over you? Did you not get the chance to introduce yourself? Oh, no, no, you did, you did. Okay, my bad. All right, um, so let's talk a little bit about what we can actually expect as we're going through this book. It's possible that you've all sort of perused through the book, but I'm going to assume that no one opened the book prior to today. So if that's the case, let's just talk about how the book is set up. So there's five, sec five sections, foundations, functional programming, object-oriented language, metaprogramming, and techniques. And for each of these sections, they all have a little page about the introduction of what you can expect. Um, and then each of the chapter within those sections has an introduction and any prerequisite package, packages you might be expected to have. It has the actual content. And then there are some exercises for you to actually apply whatever we've read. Um, and so what will this book actually teach us? Hopefully we get to know more of the foundations of R. We're expected to come in with some R experience, which it sounds like we all have, but this will teach us more about the thinking behind how R was founded. Um, we'll get to know what functional programming is and what that means for data science. And um, we'll get to know some object-oriented systems. I personally haven't seen this syntax before, so I will get to know what that is when we get to section three. Um, we'll learn a little bit about metaprogramming or type evaluations as um, Hadley frames it. And hopefully we developed a good intuition for knowing which operations in R are slow and use a lot of memory. And then 
identifying those bottlenecks and changing it into maybe C++ code that is a little bit more efficient. I know that this is a huge motivator for me being in this book club. Um, I run into this problem all of the time just because I have very large data sets, so I'm really excited about um, hopefully developing that intuition. But what will we not learn from this book? So we're not actually going to learn anything about data analytics or maybe um, data science. We're not going to learn how to use tidyverse tools. Instead, we're going to learn about what thinking was put into those tools when they were actually developed. And hopefully understanding that helps us to better use those tools. Um, we're also not going to learn how to add packages to R. We're not going to learn about CRAN. But if those are things that you are interested in learning, there is a new book club that just started that's specifically about R packages. They meet um, Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. There's also the YouTube videos posted. So tomorrow will be their second meeting. If that's something you're very interested in, you can go ahead and hop right in there. Okay. Um, and then Happy talks about some meta techniques for how to address uh, in general when you run into problems, but as you're working through the chapters especially. Uh, when you see the title of a chapter, he recommends writing down questions that you've had or problems you've run into before, uh, before you even read the content, just so that you know these are things related to this topic that I've dealt with. Um, he recommends reading the source code too to help develop that nuanced understanding of the code. Um, and he also encourages us to think like a scientist, so we should form a hypothesis about how something's working, test it to see if that's actually how, it, how it's working, record those results, and then maybe repeat it if it doesn't work how we were expecting it to. And then just some syntax to you note know, as we go through the book. Um, F will always denote a function. G will always denote parameters or variables within a function. This H is for a path. And then there's a specific seed set that's not included in the code for all of the chapters just because it would be redundant. But now we have it documented here. And then if you run into trouble, hopefully this book club and our Slack channel will be the first place you go to for help because that's part of us developing this community. But there's also always Stack Overflow in the R online community. Um, and so that's all that I had today in terms of actual presentation. But do we have any questions or want to talk a little bit about what to expect in the upcoming chapters or anything like that? Uh, Emily, where I can find the links uh, like uh, for the sign up and uh, the GitHub and other resources that you showed us? So I will share the link um, for the sign up and the Slack channel and I'll pin it so that um, we can access that really easily. And then if you click on that link, there was that tab of useful links that has the link to the GitHub and everything. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is anyone really excited about presenting on chapter two? Remember, the longer you wait, the harder it'll get. <laughs> you leave the PhDs in computational to do functional and meta things. What was that? You're going to wait for the functional and um, metaprogramming? Yeah, I'm going to chapter two. Yeah, okay. Names and values. Makes sense. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, again, I, it will default to me, but you're going to get really tired of me talking if I'm the one always presenting. So thank you for volunteering, Camilla. Um, are there any other logistical questions or just general questions? I have a question. Like uh, for the next. Uh, we read the chapter after the start of the week, and or it, it works that way. We read the chapter after, or after the Camilo, for example, has uh, talked with the lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so we can talk about what we want as a book club. The way it's been framed in the past is you read the chapter in advance of the meeting, and so. Um, you know, life happens, so you don't necessarily have to read it every single week. And um, the way past cohorts have been set up is that maybe the first 20 minutes is an overview of the content of that chapter, and then the remainder of the time is spent with some kind of practical exercise, whether it's life coding or trying to have people code things on their own computers or a discussion. Um, so it's going to be pretty tailored to whoever's presenting, whether they want to lecture the whole time or less.
Emily, we are doing the first version of the book, right? Yes. Or... So, mm -hmm. That's what's available online for free. Oh, no, both versions are available online for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some chapters on the new book hasn't been finished, finished, so. Um, I can dig more into that. If you're aware of what chapters those are, or um, I know that this was a problem for the R Packages book as well. Yeah, so um, I can quickly share my screen and show you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what you're seeing, this one is the new version. So mm -hmm. if you see uh, this, the ones that are grayed out, those are the chapters he hasn't published yet. He's probably has it on his GitHub. He like, hasn't just made it public because he's finishing it, object-oriented, functional, so on and so forth here. So, uh, but if you click on the link here, first version, that takes you to this page, which basically is the original book. Uh, so, I think the grayed out is just a section heading, not a chapter name. Mm. I think I was under that impression as well. Maybe they, um, I know that in his preface, he overviewed how he restructured some of the um, chapters. So you may not see the same chapter names between. Yeah, something about that, like something he didn't finish. I, I don't know, he said something about it, that there was something different about the ones that are grayed out, why it's not there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Let's assume so that this is. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That's fine. I just want to say, let's assume that we're not doing this one that you have up on your screen right now, but the one that you had up a moment ago. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Thanks for um, bringing that up. I ha hadn't myself actually gone to um, the page you had just put up. And are there any other general questions or comments? All right. Well, this was nice and easy then, just our intro chapter. So um, I'm really excited as we all move through this to actually learn a lot more and have people to talk through this with. I was really nervous. I put on Twitter, you know. I've been wanting to read this book for a long time, but I just know that it's not going to happen if I do it by myself. So I'm excited that we formed our own community to do this. Right, I'm going to stop the recording.